today's hosts on Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We think this is awesome timing and such a marvelous ministry. We need to be refreshed about our nation and about our forefathers. So, Patrick Henry, welcome here today. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. But after the war, we had the next convention, which uh, was supposed to just amend the Articles of Confederation. We got the Constitution out of it. Now, you should know that I spearheaded the group in Virginia. I spoke five hours against ratification of the Constitution. And I was actually very frightened about it. We were concerned that, number one, in the hands of the wrong person, the presidency could become little more than a monarchy. Number two, we were very concerned about the heavy taxation issues, the powers that it had. And number three, it called for a standing army. And we just gotten rid of a standing army. And other than that, there was no basic bill of rights, freedoms. Now, James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, who spearheaded this convention, basically said, well, these things are all understood. But we said, yes, this generation knows it, but what about future ones? Looking back, they may not know what we really me you know, meant then. So what happened was, in Virginia, James Madison, who is called the father of the Constitution, I, I spoke five hours against ratification, uh, and then Madison, I lost by the way, uh, the vote was 87 to 79. However, Mr. Madison wanted to be elected to the Senate, and, I, and George Mason and I blocked him. Then he wanted to run for the House, and I was leading this group to, to redistrict his, so he wouldn't get elected. So basically the first campaign promise probably ever made in this nation, Madison said to me, what do I need to do to get your support? And we said, Mr. Madison, you need to take Virginia's 21 Bill of Rights that we already had, plus 19 more. We gave him 40 amendments to take back to Congress. He submitted 12, got through committee, and they did adopt 10. So some people have said we wouldn't have a Bill of Rights if it weren't for me. So I, got, I will take some credit for that, I suppose. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Well, Congress hasn't, but the Supreme Court has and every court thereafter. I mean, in 1961, in defiance of nine Supreme Court cases, all affirming the rule of Jesus Christ in this nation. Let me just quote one. 1844, this was a Supreme Court case, uh, Pastor, not about the Bible just being in the classroom, but a, a textbook, if you can imagine anything so heretical. Well, Daniel Webster argued this case, and the Supreme Court said, why may not the Bible and especially the New Testament be taught in the classroom. Where else can the purest forms of morality and Christian principles be learned? The Bible is an appropriate textbook for the classroom. That's 1840. Wow. But then you have a Supreme Court in 1961 that ignores all of those court cases and seizes on a little phrase in a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptist Convention about separation of church and state. And if you read the letter, what you clearly get from it is what Jefferson meant was that it was a wall to keep government out of intermeddling with religion, not to separate them at all. So what we have going on in our nation today is just an all-out attack to remove God from every vestige of our public. It is so ironic. The Supreme Court begins every day with prayer. Uh, God's right above them. Yeah. I mean, you go to Washington. God is everywhere on all, all the all the all the famous you know uh, uh, monuments and everything else, and yet it's been taken out of the school. So that's so that's where we are today. We have a nation founded by godly men. Fifty-two of the fifty-five five senators were born again Christians. Uh, I was a lay preacher uh, myself. Um, you know, the Declaration of Independence listed 27 violations of biblical principles. So many people today are saying, well, if, if the Founding Fathers really believed in God, why isn't God mentioned in the Constitution? Well, do you know that our Constitution is founded on the Bible? Isaiah 33, verse 22, the Lord is our King, President. The Lord is our Judge, Supreme Court. The Lord is our Lawgiver, Congress. He alone will save us. So our Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, comes directly from the Bible. Yeah. Directly from the Bible. Wow. 
that is enlightening. I hope you can get this word out in our society today.